Hi there. Through the Bible in one year, we are on deck 255. Getting there, huh? Means 110 days left. We are finishing Ezekiel today, the last three chapters. Still talking about the future temple that will be built. It may have already been built and torn down again, but I don't know. No. And we're talking about all the sacrifices and the rules and the measurements and the gifts and the allotments of land. And if you're an accountant, you'll find this very interesting. I am not an accountant. So that being said, let's just read it, okay? Sacrifices at appointed times. This is what the Lord God says. The gate of the inner court that faces east must be closed during the six days of work, but it will be opened on the Sabbath day and opened on the day of the new moon. <clears throat> the prince should enter from the outside by way of the gate's portico and stand at the do doorpost of the gate while the priest sacrifices burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. He will bow and worship at the threshold of the gate and then depart. But the gate must not be closed until evening. The people of the land will also bow and worship before the Lord at the entrance of that gate on the Sabbath and new moons. New months. Back then, the new moon signified a new month. <clears throat> okay. The burnt offering at the the burnt offering that the prince presents presents to the Lord on the Sabbath day is to be six unblemished lambs and an unblemished ram. That's a lot of livestock, right? The grain offering will be half a bushel with the ram, and the grain offering with the lambs will be whatever he wants to give, as well as a gallon of oil for every half bushel. That's a lot of stuff. Okay. <clears throat> the day of the new moon, the burnt offering, is to be young, a young unblemished bull, as well as six lambs and a ram without blemish. More livestock. Right? He will provide a grain offering of half a bushel with the bull and half a bushel with the ram, and whatever he can afford with the lambs, together with a gallon of oil for every half bushel. That's a lot of oil, too. When the prince enters, he must go in by way of the gate's portico and go out the same way. <clears throat> when the people of the land come, land come before the Lord at the appointed times, whoever enters by way of the north gate to worship must go out by way of the south gate. Whoever enters by way of the south gate must go out by way of the north gate. No one must return through the gate by which he entered, but must go out the opposite gate. <clears throat> when people enter, the prince will enter with them, and when they leave, he will leave. At the festivals and appointed times, the grain offering will be Half a bushel with the bull, half a bushel with the ram, and whatever he wants to give with the lambs, along with the gallon of oil for every half bushel. <clears throat> That's a lot of oil. Man. When the prince makes a free will offering, whether a burnt offering or a fellowship offering, as a free will offering to the Lord, the gate that faces east must be open for him. He is to offer this burnt offering or fellowship offering, just as he does on the Sabbath day. Then he will go out at the gate. It must be closed after he leaves. You must offer an unblemished year-old lamb as daily burnt daily burnt offering to the Lord. You will offer it every morning. You must you must also prepare a grain offering every morning along with it, three parts with one third of a gallon of oil to moisten the, the fine flour. A grain offering to the Lord. This is a permanent statute to observe regularly, every day. Huh? They will offer the lamb, the grain offering, and the oil offering every morning as a regular burnt offering. That's a lot of livestock again. <clears throat> Transfer of the royal lands. This is what the Lord God says. If the prince gives a gift to each of his sons as their inheritance, it will belong to his sons. It will become their property by inheritance. But if he gives a gift from his inheritance to one of his servants, it will belong to that servant until the year of freedom when it will revert to the prince. His inheritance belongs only to his sons. It is theirs. <clears throat> the prince must not take any of the people's inheritance, evicting them from the property. He is to provide an inheritance for his sons from his own property, so that none of my people will be displaced by his own from his own property. The temple kitchens. <laughs> then he went through the entrance that was <clears throat> at the side of the gate <clears throat> into the priest's holy chambers which face north. I saw a place there at the far western end. He said to me, this is the place where the priests will boil a restitution offering and the sin offering, and there they will bake the, bake the grain offering so that they do not bring them into the outer court and transmit holiness to the temple. <laughs> Next he brought me into the outer court and led me past its four corners. There was a separate <clears throat> court
court in each of its corners. The four corners of the outer corner of the court were enclosed courts 70 feet long, 52 and a half feet wide. All four corner areas were the same dimensions. There was a stone wall along the inside of them, around the four of them, with ovens built at the base of the walls on the sides. He said to me, these are the kitchens where those who minister at the temple will cook the people's sacrifices. The Life-Giving River, Chapter 47. <clears throat> <clears throat> then he brought me back to the entrance of the temple and there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple toward the east for the temple of Hastes. the water was coming down from under the south side of the threshold of the temple south of the altar next he brought me to out by the way of the north gate and led me around the outside to the outer gate that faced east there was water trickling from the south side as the man went out east with a measuring line in his hand he measured off a third of a mile and led me through and led me through the water. It came up to my ankles. Then he measured off a third of a mile and led me through the water. It came up to my knees. He measured off another third of a mile and led me through the water. It came up to my waist. Again, he measured off another third of a mile, and it was a river that I could not cross on foot, for the water had risen. It was deep enough to swim in a river that could not be crossed on foot. <clears throat> he asked me, Do you see this son of man? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I had returned, I saw a very large number of trees along both sides of the riverbank. He said to me, the water flows out of the eastern region and goes down to the Arabah. When it enters the sea, <clears throat> the, the, the sea, the sea of foul water, the water of the sea becomes fresh. Every kind of living creature that swarms will live wherever the river flows, and there will be a huge number of fish because of this water goes there. Since the water will become fresh, there will be life everywhere the river goes. Fishermen will stand will stand beside it from Engelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelagelag
The west will be the portion you donate to the Lord. Eight, eight and a third miles wide as long as one of the tribal portions from the east side to the west, the sanctuary will be in the middle of it. The special portion you donate to the Lord will be eight and three quarter miles long and three and a third miles wide. This holy donation will be set apart for the priests alone. It will be eight and three quarter miles long and on eight and three quarters. They said that over and over again, right? And the west and another three and three, three and a third miles wide. West and the other side is eight and three quarter miles. So that's a rectangle. This side will be eight, eight and three quarter, eight and three quarter, three and a third, three and a third. Okay. Along on the southern side, the Lord's sanctuary will be in the middle of it. It is for the consecrated priests, the sons of Sodak, who kept my change charge and did not go astray, <clears throat> as the Levites did when the Israelites went astray. It will be a special donation for them out of the holy donation of the land, the most holy place, adjacent to the territory of the Levites. Next to the territory of the priests and the Levites, we'll have an area of eight and, three, eight and a third miles long, three and a third miles wide, with a total length of eight and three miles long, and the width three and a third miles. These people must be dense not to get this the first time. They must not sell or exchange any, but they must not transfer this or any part of the land, for it is holy and to, holy to the Lord. The remaining area, one and, one and two thirds of a mile wide and eight and three quarters of a mile long, will be for common use by the city, both for residential and open space. The city will be in the middle of it. These are the city's measurements. <clears> hey, <throat> one and a half miles on the north, south, and east side, and one and a half miles on the west side. Square. <clears throat> The city's open space will extend 425 feet to the north, the south, the east, and the west. The remainder of the length alongside the Holy Donation will be three and a third miles to the east and three and a third miles to the west. It will run alongside the Holy Donation. This produce will be food for the workers of the city. The city workers from all the tribes of Israel will cultivate it. The entire donation will be eight and three quarter miles, eight and, eight and a third miles, eight and a third miles. You are to set apart the Holy Donation along the city property as a square area. <clears throat> wow. Remaining, remaining there on both sides of the holy donation of the city of property will belong to the prince. He will own the land adjacent to the tribal portions. Next to the eight and a third miles of the donation as far as the eastern border. Next to the eight and a third miles of the donation as far as the western side of the border. The holy donation of the sanctuary of the temple will be in the middle of it. Except for the Levitical property and the city property in the middle of the area belonging to the prince. The area between the territory of Judah and, and that of Benjamin will belong to the prince. <clears throat> as for the tribes... From east side to west will be Benjamin, one portion. Okay, territory of Benjamin, east side to west will be Simeon. Territory of Simeon from east side to the west will be Ishakar. From the territory of Ishakar, from east side to the west will be Zebulon. Next to the territory of Zebulon, from east side to the west will be Gad, one portion. That's all of them, right? <coughs> Next to the territory of Gad, to the south side, the border will run from Tamar to the waters of Merak Kadesh to the brook of Egypt and out to the Mediterranean Sea. This is the land you are to allot as an inheritance to Israel's tribes, and these will be their portions. This is the declaration of the Lord God. The new city. These are the exits of the city. <clears throat> Ready? Here we go. On the north side, which measures one and a half miles, there will be three gates facing north. The gates of the city being named for the tribes of, of Israel. One, the gate of Reuben, the gate of Judah, and the gate of Levi. On the east side, which is one and a half miles, there will be three gates. One for the gate of Joseph, the gate of Benjamin, the gate of Dan. On the south side, one and a half miles, there will be three gates. One for the gate of Simeon, Ishakar, one gate of Zebulon. On the west side, there will be one and a half miles, there will be three gates. One is the gate of Gad, the gate of Asher, the gate of Nephali. The perimeter of the city will be six miles. And the name of the city from that day will be Yahweh is there. Okay? So, there you go. That is Ezekiel. Wow. Lots of measurements and lots of stuff. And there it is in writing. Okay? So, tomorrow we're going to start Joel. I think that's the whole book. I think there is only, only three chapters in Joel. Because then it goes Joel, Daniel. <laughs> I think Daniel's pretty long. But, yeah. Four, six, seven, nine, ten, twelve. Ezra. Twelve chapters in Daniel. So, there you have it. That's the book of Ezekiel. And it's and they tell all about the new city, all the measurements and what it said, and the gates and everything that's supposed to be there, and all the measurements. I'd have to do some research to see if it was actually built or if it's something in the future. The only reason I wouldn't think it's in the future because they still have all the sacrificing of all the livestock, okay? 
that once Jesus, the Lamb of God, was sacrificed, all that stopped. So I'm thinking it is a city that is was built then. Okay, and maybe they lost it again. They lost they lost every other city the Lord built for them, right? So there you go. That's day two fifty five, and we will keep doing this until we finish. Remember on September thirtieth, we are going to be starting the New Testament. So that'll be fun. But there you go. Catch up on any you may have missed. You want to say you got the whole Bible in a year, even the parts that only the accountants will enjoy, numbers and miles and gates and stuff. It's all in here now. Right? Once you read it, it's in there. So we've read it. So until next time, tomorrow we're going to start Joel. See you then.